Riley was born with a backwards heart. It's more complicated than that, of course. But that's how it was explained to me early on, and it's how I thought of it. The important thing to know is that there was something seriously wrong with my nephew's heart right from day one. It didn't work properly. Had he been born at any other time in history, he wouldn't have made it. I remember him playing on the floor of his home when he was just a baby. As we watched him, his parents explained to me that technology was just advanced enough to keep him alive. The big question was whether technology would be able to keep pace with his medical requirements as he got older. Growing up, he had three open heart surgeries. His heart problems had placed him square in the valley of the shadow of death. It was a lonely place. Not a whole lot of people could keep him company there. When he was in his teens, he came for a visit. I found out he was interested in filmmaking, like I was. So I lent him a book or two on the subject, thinking that it would be just a phase. He'd quickly lose interest and move on to something else. That didn't happen. His passion for filmmaking only grew. And we got to know one another better. We liked to talk. Riley didn't really do small talk. He'd go right from, hey, how you doing, to, what do you think of free will? He didn't believe in free will. He believed that every choice we make is dictated by every action we've taken up until that point. I asked him, how could it be otherwise? He told me I didn't understand, accused me of being just like everyone else. I told him I understood perfectly, that he wasn't the only one who ever thought about these things. What if someone just popped into existence from nowhere and had to decide what to do? I asked him. What if they had no prior experience upon which to base their decision? Would that first decision not constitute free will? Can't happen, Riley told me. It's impossible for somebody just to pop into existence, so that doesn't prove anything. We never did completely sort that one out. All I know for sure now is that you can't change the past. All you can do is prepare for the future. A future that was fast approaching. You know I'm gonna die, right? Riley said to me one day, out of the blue. I said, yeah, we're all gonna die. He said, no, no, I mean, I could die tomorrow. My heart could just give out. I said, so? I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. We both knew the truth, of course. We get into it another night. I told him what I thought happens after we die. Assuming that reality is playing by the rules we think it is, which it might not be, science says we are made up of matter and energy, none of which goes away after we die because in a closed system, energy and matter can be neither created nor destroyed. They can only be transformed from one form into another. It all stays in the universe. So after we die, we're still here, still a part of the universe, just in a different form. And if time is infinite, if it goes on forever, who knows what might happen? The matter and energy that make up Riley, which isn't even the same now as it was when he was born, could one day recombine to make a completely new Riley. I know this is maybe kind of ridiculous and I'm not saying it's the most profound and original thinking ever. We were just playing around and I could see that it was a bit of an aha moment for Riley, who is still quite young, because it conjured up possibilities. He started making his own films, made some good friends, friends who helped him. I helped him a bit, read his scripts, commented on them, taught him a few writing techniques, his knowledge of filmmaking quickly exceeded my own. Before I knew it, he was well on his way. He spent hours writing his scripts, often writing all night long. He was good at dialogue. His scripts were visceral, kinetic, sometimes violent, with strong linear narratives and memorable characters, modeled after his favorite films like Goodfellas. But there was his damned heart. One day he had a stroke, but he got better. Then he got a blood clot, but he got better. Got bacterial growth in the mechanical valve that kept his heart pumping. Got hospitalized, had a heart attack, got better. Got bored, depressed, philosophical. What if you are not real, he asked me one day. What if no one's real but me? I feel pretty real, I told him. And I am real, I think. Riley was too. So much more real than I'm making him out to be here. You see, he was more than just a guy who was sick. He was a guy who made films. 
a guy who cared about other people. He was a guy who reached out to my daughters because he cared about them. He was funny. He was silly. He was larger than life. He inspired me, challenged me not to settle, to dream bigger. Of course, he was way more complicated than all that. There are people who knew him better than me, who can tell you more. But I knew him well enough to know that he had a quality about him. Well enough to know that he would have had an amazing future if he'd been able. We are going to get hugs today. Hugs abounds. <laughs>